Spark encapsulates our passion for exploring the vast unknown of unvoiced thoughts and ideas. Hi, um, I'm Lorena Martinez. I am from Monterrey, Mexico. And this little girl is me. <laughs> she was hilarious. She believed every single family gathering was a performance opportunity. <laughs> and she talked with a lisp until she was 12. But anyway, in my 20s, I finally fulfilled my dream of being accepted into one of the top graduate acting programs in the United States. I was one of eight. And then reality punched me in the face. Obviously, acting is a famously difficult profession, but also I'm not an American citizen. And my immigration journey got dark. It was a time in my life where I was very lost and depressed. But I want to tell you the story today about the moment this little girl changed my life. OK, so after three years of grad school, I move to Hollywood. I sign my lease, I move into my apartment, and I make an appointment with an immigration lawyer. And he tells me, Lorena, you have one year to prove you're extraordinary, or you get deported. <laughs> extraordinary, what does that mean? <clears throat> Basically, you have to get famous in one year. Yeah. Okay. There's no plan B, so let the countdown begin. Eleven months left. I come up with a brilliant strategy, and I network my face off. I get a manager, I get an agent. These are people that help you find work. I'm meeting casting directors, I'm getting a few callbacks. Nine months. No bookings yet, but that's okay. This is part of the process. I'm doing everything right. This is going to... Six months. Dios mío. Time moves very fast. But I hear they're rebooting Charmed and that they want Latinas to play these sassy witches. So I call my manager, you know, my teammate, and he tells me, oh, well, you're not really the CW type. Those girls are very skinny. So I fire my manager and keep my agents. <laughs> Five months left. I finally get the callback. A role I'm perfect for. She is funny. She is bilingual. She is powerful. She is me. I get to the final callback and I soar in that room. And then I wait. Two days later, my agent calls. Hey, tell her I'll call her right back one minute. Hun, you didn't get it. Oh. Did they say why? Yeah. Hun, I'm sorry. They just don't think you look Mexican. Four months left. Nothing is working for reasons beyond my control. I am so lost and getting all kinds of advice that doesn't feel right to me. I'm starting to get anxiety attacks, and it takes hours of work every morning for me to feel like I can swim up to the surface and breathe. For the first time in my life, I'm going to fail. <laughs> so one day, as I was eating junk food in my workout clothes, <laughs> the Mary Poppins musical pops up in my shuffle. I was obsessed with her when I was little. I called her Mary Poppins. <laughs> and I'm listening to this song, and I have this vision of her elegantly flying with her little umbrella in the middle of the craziest windstorm that's literally blowing people away with their puppies. And she's just effortlessly thriving. It's just easy for her. I love acting more than anything. It's what my soul is here to do. 
But what if no one ever believes in me? I cry for hours. And then, out of nowhere, I hear this little voice. Píntala! Pinta Mary Poppins! Eh, no. Paint her. How is that going to help? Painting is not going to get me an extraordinary visa, trust me. No importa, tú píntala! No, I, I don't have materials. I don't remember the rules. I, 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 it has been 12 years since I... Lola! Pinta Mary Poppins! Please! I loved painting when I was a little girl. I especially loved singing full Broadway scores while painting magical Broadway divas. There she is. Okay, so I go to the art store, I get me some oils, some mediums, and the biggest canvas I could fit in Ronda, my red Honda. This made no sense, I had no time. Every single inspirational speaker I follow was telling me to hustle, withstand the pain, you don't rest, you don't stop until you make it happen. See, okay, but I need one hour where my biggest problem is how do I mix bright pink? So for a few hours, I sing along to musicals and get lost in this painting, just like I used to do when I was a little kid playing in my room. How do you make bright pink? It's a very short road from the pink to the punch. Okay, so it's red and white, and it's not white, it's red. So warm or so yellow? No, that's orange. Kind of pretty, though. Maybe this is a sun <gasps> Is this a sunset? Oh, my God. I have four months to get famous or I'm going to get deported. <laughs> In the meanwhile, there are mouths to be kissed before. That should be a TV show. An actress has one year to get famous or she gets deported. What if I write it? And there it is. In this moment of pure, unproductive joy, my inner child reminds me of who I am, of the woman she came here to be. She doesn't wait for permission. She doesn't follow the rules. Singing and painting opened up this whole world of little Lore's joy. She drowned out the noise, she shut off that clock, and I was finally able to listen to myself. I'm gonna write a TV show, and I'm gonna star in it. And I'm probably not gonna get famous in three months. So I'm buying more time. I'm going back to school, extending my student visa, and learning about television development. The months go by, I get a mentor from one of my favorite TV shows, I get into stand-up comedy, and a year later, I finally book the job that gets me the extraordinary visa. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, no. But what, <laughs> what would have happened if I ignored that little voice that was begging me to play, begging me to waste some of the little time I had left? We've subscribed to a world that is obsessed with results and accomplishments. Burnout has become part of our culture, and joy is an afterthought. It's like you have to deserve it. But what if the pathway towards the life of our dreams is actually lit by joy? What if joy is the way? And I am not talking about being positive and seeing the bright side of things because a lot of the time that advice just invalidates the human experience. I'm talking about the kind of joy that awakens your inner child. The one that happens when you play the way you did when you were a kid. So I did an experiment. I started playing before anything important. Dancing to Britney before auditions, Painting before I sit down to write, that's what your owl in your chair is. Playing volleyball before I go on stage, just purposefully awakening my inner child and stepping into my joy zone. And this is what happened. My enthusiasm and excitement completely overpowered my nerves and the pressure to be good. I started getting more callbacks, actually booking jobs, thank you God. But best of all, I was having so much more fun. 
I've learned that when we step into this joy zone, our inner child gives us three gifts, big ones. The first gift is that joy leaves clues to who you really are. And they're really easy to find. These clues come in the form of what lights you up, what excites you, sparks your curiosity. So simple, but pay attention because that is your heart going, yes, this. These clues are the light you need to see your best next step. That's all you need. You don't need to have all the answers. You get to discover them. But you cannot think your way to your purpose. You have to listen for these clues. The second gift is probably my favorite. Joy unleashes creative genius. Why two things? A, because when you're in your joy, you become obsessed with the moment you're in. You're present and you're vibing with your intuition. And B, because joy unlocks wild imagination. Huge. Imagination is what opens the door to a new way of being in the world. When you are present and your imagination is unhinged, you enter a state of flow. That timeless, sacred space of focus and collaboration with the source of creation. It's deep, but this is where genius is born. The great works of art, world-changing, innovative ideas, legendary college essays, this is it. When you are in the flow, you are living in your magic. And the third gift, last one, is that joy sparks courage. I don't know why, but there is no vacancy for fear in the joy zone. It pushes self-doubt out the door for a little bit. It awakens that feisty side of you that sees a shaky log across a river and says, that's a bridge, and you just go across it, you don't even think about it. It's like joy gives you the audacity to believe in yourself really hard, if only for a few moments. <laughs> But that's okay, you don't need to be courageous all the time, just a few key moments. I've never written anything, but I'm gonna write a TV show and I'm gonna star in it. Can you imagine if someone gave me that idea while I was freaking out? I would have completely psyched myself out. Girl, what? You can't even book one episode, you want a whole show? Yes, a whole show. And you better believe I had a drag race worthy lip sync performance to Beyonce's formation before going into a meeting where I had to convince executives that I have to star in the show. Oh, Lorena, honey, the show is good. We'd love to help, but, but the, lead, the lead really needs to be someone famous. That's just not you. The show is called Not Famous. Delusional courage is the driving force of this story, not a known face. That's me. It worked. They said yes. I got a shopping deal. <laughs> but okay, recap. I followed an idea that lit me up. I poured my creative soul into it, and I was courageous, and suddenly, Regardless of the outcome, whether the show ever gets made or not, I've sort of accidentally become the artist I always wanted to be anyway. And that is the point. It's about who you become on the road to your accomplishments. Not so much the accomplishments. So I want to do this together real quick. Jump in with me. You're going to close your eyes. You're already here. Have the full experience. Close your eyes, please. And I want you to picture yourself as a little kid doing something you absolutely loved. It could be a nature summer camp activity, a game you love to play, or maybe it's the way you created for hours in your room. Say hi to this version of you, they're perfect. And I want you to grab their hands and tell them they're invited on this journey. Not just invited, needed. And you are going to continuously bring them in simply by playing the way they love to play. You can open your eyes. Listen, life is gonna life. 
Not everyone's gonna believe in you. And sometimes choosing joy is going to feel impossible because we've been conditioned for productivity, conditioned to deplete ourselves, to get ahead, to impress others. But I believe with my entire soul that stepping into your joy zone and awakening your inner child is the most powerful move you can make, especially when it gets dark. So if you're anxious, stuck, heartbroken, before college applications, auditions, job interviews, life decisions, get those Legos out. Do a little dance. Go outside and find a really cool rock. When it feels like you have absolutely no time, I dare you to be a little unproductive. And above everything else, for the rest of your life, I dare you to play. Gracias. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.